Hi everybody, thanks for watching Access Hockey MI. We hope all of our United States friends had a great Independence Day. We certainly did. It's always great to celebrate the best country in the world. No offense Bar to none, others, but well, I mean, if you want to, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, today we have some Detroit Red Wings news, hence the donning of our favorite apparel, Woo! which happens to be Detroit Red Wings apparel. Um, so <laughs> like we are going to talk about Alex Tangay today, who was just signed as an assistant coach for the Red Wings. He has 16 years of NHL experience behind him. And we're geeked. We just kind of like put it in front of our faces, read all the stats at him, and we're like, okay, now Getting we're more excited. More excited. Yeah, so we're going to talk about him today and kind of what that means for the Red Wings and the Griffins going mm -hmm. forward. So we've obviously been in a search for an assistant coach since Dan Bilesma has decided to part from the team. Um, He's moved on. He has moved on. He wants to be head <laughs> Which coach. Which is fine. So good for him. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Eisenman and Blaschel have been working really closely together trying to figure out what the best fit for the team would be and what trajectory the team is on, who would really kind of fit that mold. And I know there had been rumors of a few names being thrown out, and a lot of them would not have done that. I always love it <laughs> well, when people throw names out, yeah. and Eisenman does the complete opposite. Like something yeah. you're like, where? <laughs> huh? He's like, gotcha. And then we're like, okay, that's fine. That works. I'm all cool. for it. So Tangay has 16 years of NHL experience, nine of which were with the Colorado Avalanche. So if you remember anything, if you're a Detroit fan for any length of time, you know that our relationship with Colorado has been less than And if you don't nice. know... You should go watch some 90s games, mm. please, mm -hmm. and finals. Stanley turtle. Cups. Just think turtle. <laughs> Just watch some, please. So Dan Gay had over 1,000 NHL games, 863 career points. So the guy was a very productive NHLer when he was there. Fast forward, and his coaching started in um, the AHL with the Iowa Wild, where he had two seasons under his belt there, where they improved to being fifth best in the league for power play, which is really impressive considering Iowa up until that point had never made it into the playoffs. They were really struggling to kind of get a groove together. is surprising considering They're the Griffins. As we watch the Griffins, we see Iowa so many times, mm -hmm. especially in this last year where we can only play a certain – number of teams and we only had a certain amount of teams we saw Iowa so often <laughs> and it's one of those teams where you're like that guy again that guy yep, again yep. so it's like we we know this team but it was it's always surprising to see even if those teams are really good against you and they post good sometimes records they just don't make it sometimes they did not make it to the playoffs right um except for twice I think now officially mm -hmm. once officially or twice. twice now yeah. yeah so and that might have been different had they done like a a playoffs in this last season, right. but they didn't. That would have been very interesting. But they took away their first Western Conference final championship in 2019-20. So all really cool. In that time, Tangay was the assistant coach as well, and he was in charge of power, power play and penalty kill, which is an area where the Detroit Red Wings have seriously struggled. And Griffins, if and, we're honest. And Griffins, exactly. So with Tangay, a lot of things that Blaschel and Eisenman were saying is that he has a big focus on the micro development and a micro approach, meaning... Let me explain this. Okay. So the micro... <laughs> <laughs> I want to jump in here. I just okay. want to say. So macro would be the big picture. Micro is talking about individual player ability. And this comes into his ability as a former NHL player mm -hmm. who was usually on the power play that has the experience and has the emotional takeaways from playing himself. So nothing against Blaschel. He doesn't have NHL experience. He doesn't know NHL power play yeah. and power kit, power penalty kill, power, <laughs> power kill. penalty kill <laughs> as experienced. So yeah. this would be a huge benefit for the Griffins and the, well, mostly the Red Wings, of course. But right. I assume we'll see him probably in Grand Rapids sometimes as well. So yeah. micro and macro. <laughs> That's, what that That's is. the difference. <laughs> Which is really cool, too, because it actually shows a genuine enthusiasm, I think, for the individual efforts. Now, when it comes to penalty kill and power play and all that, a lot of times we think of it as the unit. Yeah. And we forget that there are individuals that if they're not executing the whole structure and the whole team and the whole unit... And cannot... doing what they're supposed to do exactly. on the power play. And there are things that I'm sure they see in players, and Tangay, I'm sure, will get a very good glimpse of this during development and training camps, that there's players that they can do more... They just haven't tapped into it yet. And so yeah. with his micro approach, we're really excited to see, you know, who really steps up in this next season and who ends up getting put on the special teams that yeah. hasn't been in those situations yet. Yeah. Um, and like Janae said, with his NHL experience, being able to understand those emotions and the time and what it actually feels like to be in those situations is going to be really important in how they address each development. And to work on the micro side of things also speaks to the, on a power play, there are guys who are supposed to get the puck out to the point for shots. There's there are those guys... It's their job to keep it against the boards to get it to mm -hmm. the guy who is supposed to be shooting the puck. So there are going to be those um, last chance, you know, shots at yeah. the net that we've you seen in like the playoffs yep. that recently just ended. 
Congrats, Tampa Bay. We'll talk about you a little later. Um, <laughs> it's really going to be important, and I think that it's great because, of course, the power play unit, like Rachel said, and the penalty kill unit are a unit, of course, but mm-hmm. those players individually need to know their task. Mm-hmm. And I think that having Alex Tangay on their side with the experience and with the enthusiasm, because you know as well as we know, we love development. <laughs> and so to have a guy in there who's focused on development of individual player is mm-hmm. very exciting, I think, for the Red Wings' future. Yep. And it's going to be, and he's even excited. So yeah. you don't want someone on your team as, okay, the Red Wings aren't doing great. So <laughs> you don't want someone who doesn't want to be on your team. You don't want someone who doesn't want to be on your coaching staff. You want They're just that, there for the paycheck. Yeah, you, you know? want yeah. a coaching staff that's enthusiastic mm-hmm. about where the team's going, that trusts in the, that they take the buy-in that mm-hmm. Eiserman gives them, and Eiserman has faith in them too. And that's what's going to push the team forward right. is if they're going to have guys who want to be there, who want to see Detroit mm-hmm. succeed. And I think he's one of those guys. What's really cool. Which is ironic because he was a Colorado yes. Avalanche player. I yes. just think it's ironic. <laughs> We're saying good things about this, but, you know, rewind a few years and we probably wouldn't. Talk to me when I was two. And boy, was I mad. <laughs> I was older. I understood more. Six. <laughs> that's old. <laughs> Anyways, so with the, with the excitement, like Janae was saying, it is really cool for Alex and, and his standpoint. This is his first NHL coaching assignment. So he's already got that enthusiasm coming into it where this is a big opportunity for him, but also being a part of a franchise. And yes, we're not doing great, but Detroit is a well-respected franchise. Steve is a well-respected say, player and GM. I think we've all bought into the development. Right. I and think we've been forced to, but I think we've bought into the development that Steve If you didn't, then you bring now. And so to kind of fast forward a little bit to the Tampa Bay Lightning, who won, have now won twice in a row, yep. which is very exciting, very encouraging. I'm glad they had people this year to celebrate yeah, with. Yeah, I mean, it was just a great overall feel. It's always awesome to see the team, whomever it is, celebrate. It's yes. just one of the greatest times on in sports to watch them lift the cup, to hear the crowd. It is the coolest trophy. Stan Post got his name too. on it this year, yeah. of course, because he played more. For him. <laughs> yeah, so as a captain, that's awesome. But um, people are wondering, of course, if because Iserman... It's basically we're seeing in Tampa Bay the outplaying mm-hmm. of what Iserman did in the guts of the team. So yep. right now that's happening to us. We in the guts of the team. Mm-hmm. We're trying to get. He's building it up so that way there's a foundation so that in a few years we can also see something like that coming right. to fruition. Right. Exactly. And the the way I kind of like to frame it and think of it is the the foundation. He's creating that winning culture. That not saying he is, but if he were to leave. That culture would continue because it was so ingrained in that tradition and the development and the process was so ingrained in the team's just overall makeup yeah. that it becomes what Tampa is now. Now, granted, I don't think Tampa's going to go on to win like back to back to back to back. I, and they have quite a bit of superstars. They do. Um, <laughs> they <laughs> so, have like, some very well paid Like people. every line, basically. Yeah. So, but, I mean, the Red Wings of the 90s. Yeah. So, we were amazing. But yeah, when true. you look on the back end of things, he did make a ton of shifting and changes in his first couple seasons with them as far as the coaching and their their use of their development system, too, because previous to that, they were not using Syracuse right. the way that they should have been. So it kind of is a really encouraging precursor. We might not mimic, of course, a back-to-back cup win, which is, you know, it's not super common. Um, but Tampa just, has quite a few to catch up to us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> not, not saying just says every Red Wings fan is like, yeah, we're not good now, but you do remember. You, you wait. <laughs> you just but wait. It is really exciting, and with Alex Tangay coming aboard, I'm, I'm looking forward to this next season to see what he decides to change. Of course, it will be yeah. in tandem with Blashill and Eiserman. Right. What he decides to change as far as how we approach power play, penalty kill, and just overall development of the players. Yeah. So, of course, looking forward to the draft, we have quite a few more draft people that we're going to talk about in the yeah. coming weeks. Um, but we're really excited to see this coaching staff change and to see kind of what he adds to the team as I assume he was hired to add to the team. What? To to be <laughs> a changer on the team. And I'm really excited to see kind of how that goes. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we can see him at the prospect camp, maybe yes. see kind of how he works. Um, so, yeah, the prospect camp should be coming up in September. We haven't yep. heard any details on it yet, but usually it's it after is the draft. this year, guys. Yeah, it's going to be great. And if we're going to go, do it. it. Yeah, it's so it. worth it. Um, so that's kind of what we got out of Alex Tangay. Yes, he was a Colorado Avalanche player. Don't go buy an Avalanche past jersey. It. I mean, Dan Bilesmo was a Penguins coach. Yeah. And we got past that. So we can do this. We're, we're big. We're big people. We're, we can do this. We are We are the bigger people. So <laughs> um, let us know what you think about this addition to the team and kind of what you think he's going to add. Um, if there's something that we missed, please let us know. Let us know in the comments if there's anything else exciting or yeah. if there's any draft person that has come up to your 
attention that you're like, <laughs> man, this guy is going to be great. All of them. Yeah. Let us know um, in the comments. We're going to be talking about them a little more going forward. And thanks so much again for watching. Have an awesome day. And we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.